is 19th of October 2022, 450 New North Road, IG6 3EB. These men have come from the Romford County Court whilst the matter is in the Central London County Court in H1 PP8822, Bank of Scotland trading as Halifax versus the estate of the late Sardana Dolly Chowdhury, my late sister, mother of baby Sunaina. The front door has been forced entry, the cameras are not working, they have been disconnected within a few minutes. Across the green, seven men in three cars and a white van have been watching and waiting for us to leave. My friends who came at nine o'clock, they said they were coming at nine o'clock and these men waited. It is now 1 p.m. They've been waiting across the green for four hours. They've broken entry, they're inside and they are not identifying themselves. They say that they're from the Romford County Court, that they are instructed by the Crown. Um, they do not produce any warrant. They are not going to move even though the police are on their way. Okay, so we need to see the warrant then if it was dismissed. They are trapped well, inside the house. In the house what they thought was nobody would find out. They were going to take possession and I would come back and the whole house would be boarded up. The police have now just arrived. What's going on? And this officer, he says they will have a warrant or that he will ask them to produce the warrant, but that there was no warrant produced. So the, the police officer is asking me if I've received a letter from the court. Now, it's his duty to see the warrant which authorizes these men to break entry. And for him to ask me if I've received a letter from the court, that is not the procedure. He should know the procedure is that the there is an appointed bailiff from the Romford County Court who comes with a warrant authorizing him to break or force entry, which is served on me. And if I'm not at home, as it was the case here, they could not have broken entry. Now this police officer should have made his inquiries from the men inside the house. The female officer has gone straight in. She's having a private word with them. I would like to know what's on her body camera footage. And I'm asking him whether it's recording and he says it is. Um, my friend has just come back from the bus because he'd left. These, Asham has also come back on the bus because I phoned him 10 minutes ago that they've broken in after my friend had left. So now the mail officer has gone in to talk privately with these um, alleged bailiffs from the Romford County Court. The officer is asking for the warrant and he has not been able to produce for me the warrant, the valid warrant for issued from the court authorizing forced entry at 1 p.m. today on the 19th of October. Now what this officer is holding are notice of eviction. These are all not the warrant. None of these are any warrant that's valid at 1 p.m. on the 19th of October 2022. Uh, this notice of eviction is dated the 19th of May 2022 and it says that the bailiffs will be coming on the 19th of October at 9 a.m. in contempt of a hearing due to take place in the Central London County Court at 10 a.m. to consider my application to dismiss the claim by the Bank of Scotland trading as Halifax against the estate of the late Sardana Dolly Chowdhury, my late sister, the mother of baby Sunaina Chowdhury. That application to dismiss the claim would have a right of appeal. What's your name? I would have three weeks to appeal and then my appeal would take about six months to be heard and then the 
higher jurisdictions of the Central London County Court would have to deal with it. So now these are these other guys who are going to do the shuttering on the windows. They've been told to continue. The officer, the female officers and the male officers have gone in, spoken to these guys privately and the boys have been told just shutter it up. So that the officer is using the notice of eviction as a warrant to break entry. He's now on the phone to Rumford County Court. Uh, the, the bailiffs have given him a number to call and he's being told that there is a Mike Jones who is the appointed bailiff. The officer says to this alleged bailiff who is Mike Jones? Is Mike Jones here? And they say, no, he's not here. At that point, this officer should have stopped the shuttering, should have got rid of, arrested these seven men, but he allows them to continue to shutter the windows up with the metal shuttering. This is the head bailiff now. He's finally got the courage to come out. He's been here twice before and uh, he's already had private words with the, poli with the female police officer. Yeah. So everything is going ahead without there being any warrant, without there being any identification of these alleged bailiffs. So now they're threatening, they're threatening m myself and my friend that he's asking me if who else lives here. Um, he, they are telling us that we will be arrested if we don't move away from the window so that they can shutter the window with the metal shutters. So the police have sided with these criminals, these burglars, the police has now become the agent. They have obviously offered the police officers a promotion and immunity to this crime. The banks will hire them and give them big jobs. And this is how recruitment takes place. He says he doesn't give me permission to record. I already have a recording of him when he came to serve the first notice of first alleged notice of eviction uh, on the 12th of September which court are you from um, for the first eviction to take place on the 26th of September he was not there at that time and so they've, they've been told to carry on, boys. The boys are carrying on and the police are trying to remove us from the, my home and they are trespassing on my home to aid and abet the theft of my home um, by these criminals' networks. They've been recruited. You have to serve it on and uh, it's not a it's not anything unusual Where that homes are stolen warrant? every day by warrant? some excuse some officer some uniform comes along and Why is that? Blah, blah 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 oh you you, you have so got a letter have from the court have you, have, you have you identified the bailiff the have you got the appointed got bailiff the next to you no there is no appointed bailiff and present and therefore that's the end of it you have to then leave 2489 EA Ilford and uh, here we have 1995 EA um, Constable Holland and Frau so they are clearly in training, they have no idea what they're doing and they should have called more senior officers to the scene to deal with it, which is what I tried to do. And he said I was abusing the 999 process. So we have crime going on in broad daylight. 
We have okay. police officers who are siding well. with crime. We have an old woman who is made homeless and thrown on the streets by these seven men. And the Bank of Scotland, trading as Halifax, has hired Walker Morris LLP solicitors to steal homes and businesses from 5,000 victims. So those 5,000 victims since 2008 are awaiting their compensation from the bank. They have been subjected to homelessness, poverty, divorce, family breakups, suicides, and total ruin by the banks. They were, there's, amongst them are 110 estate agents who were robbed of their businesses. They had put second loans on their homes. They, they're offered loans that, that are going to be difficult for them to pay off causing them to become uh, bankrupted and this is a daily occurrence in the UK these men have stolen thousands of homes in their lifetime every single day they're doing either serving notices of fraudulent instruments these are totally uh, printed on their home printers there's no name of any judge there's no signature there's no stamp or seal and uh, these criminals have got away with it thousands of times the police have aided and abetted the theft of these homes and businesses you have this constable Holland who doesn't know her oath of office. You're trespassing. You're she's going to jail. young, very You're young, going to jail. and she's very You're going to jail. Uh, confident that she knows what she's doing. So this is why I called her an actress, because she should know her oath. She should yeah. be able to tell me what her oath is, and no, if she doesn't know her oath, things, she's yeah. certainly not serving so or protecting me, and she sided with the bailiffs. She went inside in by herself take, first. Um, the reason why police officers go in pairs is that they, they, you they have a um, no, act as witnesses for each other. And she went and dealt with the bailiffs first, yeah. which meant What's that she's more the senior warrant? than the man. So she went in and, the and got the boys to the continue the shuttering the windows. The break entry? What's the so Show even though she's young, younger, uh, um, less senior than the other guy, she actually made the decision for the theft to continue. So now they've told me I must put my camera away whilst they're showing me the second notice of eviction, which is dated the same as the first notice of eviction, which is 19th of May. She says it's dated today, I think, she says. But no, it's dated the 19th of May. They have two weeks to execute that, and it's out of date. Now, these guys are criminals, so they can lie, and every time they say something, they are they have spent their whole life um, killing people, making people homeless, stealing children, and this is a UK police service in action. They have absolutely no idea about the law. They have no idea that crimes are being committed in broad daylight every single day in the UK. She's got her arms folded like she's having a problem with the fact that an old woman is asking to go back in her home and she wants the police officers to do their job of arresting these men you got the wrong court. They've come from to the stop wrong them court. continuing to steal homes they to give to criminals the like themselves. 
They live in big houses, they have stolen homes given to them. Every single one of these will be given a mansion which they haven't worked for, no, you, you've got except that they've for 9 been recruited through the back door by the banks. So this officer so where is, is made aware that he needs to identify the bailiffs and if you notice on his thing, it said Frau Antonio. Um, so he's. Uh, I'm going to call He said he was German or Spanish. Is that what you call it? And uh, I've now said I'm going to call the more senior police. He's incompetent. But that's he should officer. arrest these okay, men. So you want to call this guy is using the mask to hide his identity. I already have him on CCTV. He has a tattoo on his left arm. And he drives a white car, which he parked on the double yellow line on the 12th of September. And this guy drives a navy blue 4x4. What did you call the police for? Um, what? This what officer police was folding for? her arms the whole time. She doesn't know why she's there. The as far as she's concerned, they've got a notice of eviction and they can steal a house on based on an, a, an outdated, expired notice of eviction, which anyone can print off their printers. So the numbers, so you have one old lady being made homeless. You have seven men, two of these who are in charge, and then the five boys who are one locksmith and no, four were boys no, who are doing the shuttering house. in this white boy. van, which warrant? is unmarked, no and it That's is a uh, hired it's vehicle. That, so it's a one, one day job the that they've okay. been told, the bank That's has told them, warrant. get the house, yeah, don't care how you do it. Get out. And uh, whoever, get off, whatever police officers come come along, make sure you give them a bribe. They can't refuse. And this is how it's done. He's got his You're notice of eviction officer, in his pocket, okay? You're not a police officer. pretending it's a warrant. He should be arrested and jailed for life. This one is exactly the same. He's got a fake look at his shirt, and he looks scruffy. That's not official duty. Now, Constable Frau and Constable Holland are a disgrace no, to the Home it Office. But typical, they're typical. Like at least they, the Somebody's Home Office will say yes, they turned up. Like but they turned up to aid and abet the crime when they were supposed to Medication turn up and, and arrest sir, these men to stop the crime. So officer. last time you the police did not turn off. up, this time the police turned up and aided and abetted no, the theft of the no, home. I want my house back and I'm now he's saying if you don't move away from the window, you, you will be arrested. So my friend is not moving away. Uh, this is now... this criminal is reading with great difficulty a five-year-old what a five-year-old can read he's having great difficulty reading uh, he's taken over the control from the police he's now cautioning my friend uh, an arrest and my friend is not moving and the police officer is now trying to provoke my friend into some kind of altercation to make an arrest for some reason, but to um, aid and abet in the theft of the home. Now he's coming in my face, threatening me that I will be arrested as well. So now these officers are acting as agents for these criminals. The boys are carrying on shuttering the windows. They're cutting the metal sheets. They've, they've got the uh, metal frames to cover the doors. 
part of the criminal network. This is maybe a £500,000 house. And uh, the cost of today, they're going to charge me, my late sister, a uh, hundred thousand pound costs of of, of this uh, theft onto onto their bill. Walker Morris LLP. Robert James Payne is the solicitor. Callum Davies is the caseworker who is soon to become a solicitor. And then they use various names like Rachel Elgar. They use the name of. Ellen McLean, and they have a string of names that they use. Those people may not even be aware that their names are being used. So we're repeatedly asking the police to produce the warrant, a valid warrant that authorized these guys to break entry at 1 p.m. today on the 19th. Of October 2022, whilst there is an application to dismiss the claim in the central London County Court, these men have come from the Romford County Court, which only has a district judge sitting, doesn't have a circuit judge. So this is a circuit judge uh, matter, which has been hijacked by these criminals pretending to be the circuit judge. And they've come from uh, Romford County Court, where, deputy, uh, where the district judge is Kemp. District Judge Kemp has allowed Winston Leachman an office there to impersonate an immigration lawyer. Winston Leachman has been stealing homes for decades, and he has a firearms license given to him by Sussex Police for decades, and he has taken over the courts, his networks of home thieves and these fake bailiffs, fake Criminals have hijacked the courts. The, um, they've never had a situation here that the, they had to continue with the theft because they'd already forced entry. They were trapped inside. I'm speaking to another friend who again is asking me to produce, ask them to produce a warrant, ask them to identify the appointed bailiff from the court. They have not done that. And they have called the police. The, these police officers have called the police to arrest us. The police are on their way. The police van. The boys in the background are continuing to shutter the windows. The police are aiding and abetting. I'm on the phone to the police to call the police to come and stop the theft of my home, to return my home to me, to remove these trespassers. And the police say they're not coming. I'm speaking to an officer, Betts. B E T T S. If you could be so kind, sir, so the police maybe are not aware that this is being live streamed on Facebook. Bed Chowdhury. Hello, yeah, can I have your badge number, please? Which is my late dad, a judge, an honorable judge who escaped from India's gun controllers of the judiciary, which is UK guns. UK Guns had taken control of all judiciaries in the early 60s, all around the world, all around the Commonwealth. Uh, whilst uh, the Commonwealth is the pretense of those um, the games of sports and entertainment around the world is run by was the purpose for the Commonwealth, but actually it was more than that. It was judicial gun control of the Commonwealth since the early 60s. Yeah, but they're so I have first-hand knowledge of that as, as being a member of no a family of 300 years of judges, the judges in Lahore, no. or a family from Lahore, 
uh, Chowdhury's. Chowdhury means Lord. And uh, now the police officer has gone on the phone to 999. She is an actress and she can act herself out of any situation. She's basically totally given a disinformation about the situation. She hasn't told the senior officers there's no warrant. She hasn't told them the names of the appointed bailiff is not present. That means that they she should have arrested them. So there's the shuttering going on the windows. And the police officer says, I'm, we're not coming. And that's so, so I, myself and Michael get arrested. We are put in the back of the van. We are taken to Fresh Wharf in Barking, seven miles away. We, I have chest pains by the time I arrive. I asked to see the nurse. I asked to see the nurse on four no, occasions because I, my chest pains are getting they're worse and abetting. They're aiding and abetting a theft from the van, home. back of the police van, and I'm denied the they're nurse on the fourth time when I'm uh, assessed by the nurse. She finds my blood pressure 220 uh, over 115. And she says to the officers, you have to take her to accident and emergency immediately. And the officers, these same officers, Constable Frau and Constable Holland, have to take me in the marked police car to accident and emergency. But before I saw the nurse, the sergeant at Fresh Wharf asked constables Frau and Holland to give him the warrant which they were unable to produce. The sergeant then said, why have you brought them here if you don't have a warrant? And he said, I cannot log them in to the system without the warrant. So, at that point, the sergeant, I think his name was Betts, he should have told the officers to arrest these alleged bailiffs, these fraudsters, these imposters. He should have told them to return a, a, the possession of the home, but because the police are compromised by the banks, the police are bought out by the banks, as we've seen how these officers were bought out, bribed to comply in the theft of this home. That the even the sergeant at Fresh Wharf did not comply with the law. He, the biggest crime committed is by the sergeant at Freshwater, who should have ordered the return of my home. He should have arrested these men and he should have suspended these police officers immediately as incompetent and agents for the criminal networks. But sergeant decided to himself um, Aiding and abetting B, theft of homes. Gonna, um, party to the theft, party to the of crimes by the bank. Treason so there is no home office you that's operating of in England. Treason. The police are bribed. Constable Frau, and these networks of, of criminals pretend to come from the court. It was proven that they were not from the court. And it didn't matter because the Do you know your oath of office? Do you know officers your didn't of really office? care. They got their promotions, they've got yeah. their bribes, that, they've got their yes. careers the secured. Sorry? And the yeah, banks can override the situation. Sorry? They can override buy out every like age oath? everyone in the situation. So what the CEO at the Lloyds Banking Group, which is oh, the parent of 
what to serve and protect Bank me. Bank of Scotland trading yeah. as Halifax. You're not serving me and you're not protecting me. They're your so therefore, you're guilty is, of treason. Um, where is it? Show me. Charlie Nunn. No, it's a piece of paper. And yeah? uh, there's a guy it. called uh, Budenberg. Not valid. You, as a so police officer, should know that these bankers were already prosecuted criminally in 2013 to 2018 to by the Thames Valley Police, and they were jailed officer. for the same banking so frauds that they've committed duty, here so in H1 PP8822. So Hotel One Papa Papa Double Eight Double Two. And so this is in contempt of the precedencies of the previous criminal prosecutions by the criminal courts that you have police present aiding and abetting in the theft of homes in 2022 in contempt of the precedences of the criminal prosecutions in 2018. The Financial Conduct Authority brought those proceedings against the bankers. The Financial Conduct Authority has a criminal liability that the pet police and these courts and fake bailiffs are continuing in those crimes in contempt of those prosecutions. The FCA has a duty to regulate you're not, you're this, the banks, yeah. and is failing to you do so. Really it is allowing the banks to bribe no. the police. No, 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 no. It is yeah, permitting the hijack of the courts, the Romford County Court. And how they've got caught out here is that I went to the Romford County Court a day earlier on the 18th of October. I and filled out an application to stay the eviction thinking this is all legit if it was all legit yeah, I would have got an order for a stay but because this is not legit this is crimes going on there is is a predetermination nothing is going to stop my theft of my home because the bank has decided it everyone else is just an instrument to comply with the bank's predetermination Exactly. And this shows proves that the there is no government, there is no leaders, there's no um, prime ministers or there's no ministers, there's no cabinet, there's no lords. It's just sheer crimes and criminal networks. It is sheer uh, vulnerable victims that are targeted and there is nothing to stop these crimes going on in England. So all the banks in England were found money laundering 200 billion pounds abroad. This is, this is how they turned their black crime money into white money by stealing a house and then reselling it. So the next doors here, where the where the white van is parked, there was an old lady there by the by the name of Barbara Withington. Barbara was 94 years old when she was found. Her body was found decomposed, um, and it was the the smell was reported from the bus stop, and they found her body a few weeks after she died. So the council, Redbridge Council, stole that house and gave it to criminals, drug dealers. So there were drug dealers having parties, um, sex parties, in the garden, in a marquee, two marquees in the garden. And I reported that to the Redbridge Council and the police. And they never, and there was a, they tried to, um, kill members of my friends and family with a hammer. They were going to hit them on the head with a hammer. There was assault that was reported to the police and the police did nothing. Ilford police did nothing about uh, an assault and an attempted murder 
no, no, by these drug house. dealers next door, where window. Barbara Withington passed window. away at number 448, New North Road, IG6. 3EB. So, so now we have the, the other side of the house as well at 452, where an old lady had died. That home was also stolen by the Redbridge Council and it's being uh, rented out to people from abroad. So we have Get off my land. most of the houses in Hainault because these were elderly ladies who were widows from the war, Second World War. We have them, Do you understand their homes stolen the by Redbridge Council, and across that? the green there, the Redbridge Council is building Do you understand you're guilty of these um, you're going to prison for that? tower blocks you're going to prison for full of you're going to prison for treason. Single families, single parent families. And um, the hotel where I'm staying get off my land. is Stop talking full. To me. I don't know you. It's a travel What's lodge. It's full. What's Hundred name? rooms are full of no, you've got to have a name. homeless people. What is your name? Here you haven't identified yourself. By Redbridge yourself. Council. You haven't identified so yourself. So the Redbridge Council pays £160 per James. night to travel lodge for these rooms, but the Redbridge Council will not permit people to live in their own homes where the mortgage can be four or £500 per month. Here is a bicycle of uh, metal strips that are going to the back of the garden on a bicycle by the seventh, maybe eighth bailiff. Uh, shuttering lad. So there's construction work going on in the background there. That's all money laundering by the councillors uh, in Redbridge. This was a very remote area of London. Now it's buzzing with life. You can see it's overpopulated. These uh, bungalows have basements and the noise of the buses are causing the whole building to shake so the bus stop is facing the house it's the only bus stop in London which is facing the house normally they're facing the road and my sister bought this house in 2003 which was three years after a baby was huh? brutally murdered so at King George Hospital yeah. in Redbridge in good maze. Even so the, on. the bailiffs are aware that the van is on its way to arrest us so and we're not moving from this window that's open. They've tried to the force the, the window to close. They've basically assaulted me and Michael um, yeah. to force us to move away, yeah. which we're not doing. Yeah. And uh, so the this is uh, Staggard Green. Across the road is Tesco's and Co-op. They're waiting on the police to arrive to arrest me and Michael, which they do. The bailiffs are now worried that we're going to get arrested instead of them and then this is all going to go to court and then the bank is going to become the defendant and because the banks they these guys will not get paid by the bank if it goes to court so they're worried about the arrests more than we are worried we want it on we want this to go to court we want this to go public so we are happy about the arrest because we know that they cannot actually arrest us whilst there is no warrant, whilst there is no, the, the appointed bailiff is not present. The police are in trouble because of that. So we're just waiting for the police van to arrive 
Uh, there is a busy, busy, busy road. The buses have people sitting upstairs. They can see what's going on. So when I'm arrested, I'm searched. And this police officer, she goes up and down my legs, which is an embarrassing thing. This, this is all a um, male-led team. So you have two other male officers arriving, two young one young Don't talk to me. white you're male officer, officer and one young you're, you're not a police officer. Asian you're officer. You're, you should be ashamed of yourself. So there was a, an Asian yeah, bailiff that came on the 26th of September. Of There's se separate footage about that. You're now he hasn't turned up this you're time. Unfit. He came For first. He came with the paperwork, job. the fraudulent pa instrument of the notice of eviction, which they are treating as a By warrant, which it isn't. So this routine use of um, this memorandum of understanding between the police and the bailiffs is that property. a piece of paper is a warrant, Watching whether it's a warrant or if it's a blank sheet of paper, you call it a warrant, and then it's okay to steal a house as long as you call it a piece of paper of warrant. And these police officers will say, I believe it's a warrant, I believe it's issued by the court. Well, why would these people not... Uh, will why would they be here if it was not a warrant? They will say something like that. Or, um, have you seen the warrant? I don't need to see it. They say they have a warrant, so they must have a warrant. So, this is this is how it's the, same. the, it's the same people that criminal this. networks language works. It's you know that there's been a bribe paid for these words, these officers to behave in this way. So when uh, the young white officer comes in the van to arrest me and Michael, then he, he uses the same language. And I say to him, well, um, Michael says to him, why haven't you got your body camera on? He says, um, well, I was coming in the van. So I didn't need it. Well, that proves that if he's not wearing his body camera, he's not on official duty. And he is bribed by the bank. Uh, so I think Constable Frau has seen that police van has arrived. He's gone over there to brief them. And he's going to tell them, look, there's a warrant. Trust me, there's a warrant. Trust me, I've checked it out. And the two officers are obviously a lot younger than Constable Frau. So now whilst um, we're waiting, Frau is going to put them in the mindset of, yeah, carry on, carry on, boys. It's all okay, it's all legit. This woman needs so arresting. She's, she's been served with a warrant. The officers have identified the bailiffs' uh, identities that they are appointed by the Romford County Court. But the, the biggest problem they all had was that they, the bailiffs arrived at 9 a.m. There was a court hearing in the Central London County Court at 10 a.m. So any instruments they had prior to that hearing was in contempt of that hearing. So this entire incident proved that police and bailiffs and courts are in contempt of law. Of And whilst the matter is sub judice, here is a bag, a box of screws that they are putting into the double glazed windows which are going to damage the windows for life. These guys do this every day. It's an easy job. They get a thousand pound each. That's four thousand pound for breaking the locks. They've drilled through the locks and they've smashed the camera. The camera's facing the wrong way. They've switched off the cameras because the red lights were not flashing, the IR, infrared. They've broken the cameras, they've switched the cameras off. Now he says to me, your phone has got a long battery life. He said if my phone was 
recording it would have switched off by now so I said oh are you telling me now that because you've been on recorded for so long you got caught out and you you're offering to give me my house back and he didn't get that so he did just change the subject so I asked him how many warrants he served in his life he obviously looks like he should have uh, be retired by now from this job anyway it's not suitable for his health and his age that it's not uh, it's not good for him to be put in these situations every day and he's obviously having reflections about his, his life and the fact that what he's doing is has been caught out on the camera a hundred percent everything is it's been recorded these young lads, they've just Sorry? been told, look lads, is the it? house is empty, the woman's gone, everybody's gone, oh she's inside now? by herself, Every, all the other witnesses are gone, we'll go in, we'll taser her, the police will taser her and they will say they found her dead lying many, on the floor, have you served? died of shock, of uh, banging. So this is how people die in England, they're all murdered, nobody dies naturally in England. These these assassins, so they will say, name, yeah, she, we found, me. we went in, she was on the floor. What's your name then? There, there will be no post-mortem, they will even steal before. the body. This is the third time now. Uh, okay, so this is the van team that happen? has arrived to arrest, to take me and Michael to you hope not. Well, Fresh Wolf in Barking, this is another Folks, officer, you don't want your home stolen. so they no. How fair are is that? trying to talk us out of letting the theft to the theft of the house and now there's four officers and me and Michael are not moving Sorry, are from the window, open window, we're obstructing it so they cannot shutter it and uh, So we have a situation where you have seven burglars and four police officers. So there's 11 of them and just four of us. And uh, they waited since 9 a.m. till 1 p.m. They waited for my friends to leave. They thought I was in the house on my own and they were going to go in and cause my death and there was not going to be any evidence of anybody, anyone in the world that could doubt that I was dead uh, naturally. So luckily I had gone out and uh, I came back to find that that door was broken into and I called the police. The police came in flashing lights within 15 minutes but these police were obviously alerted to the fact that there might be a police incident and this is how they have chosen these incompetent officers um, who have all sided with the crime criminal networks who've been bribed and uh, we're not breaking our spirit so I said Michael say hello to my friends because we are live recording this was live streamed on my Facebook. Michael's not aware, none of my friends were aware this was recorded live. And uh, this this is UK police in operation daily, daily operations where the banks are bribing the officers. The banks are running the courts. The banks are running these fake bailiff companies, these criminal networks mm. to steal homes yes. from women, elderly women. They're being murdered yeah. daily. And these police officers are told by the bank, you'll get a promotion, don't worry. You'll get a nice big house that's stolen from another elderly woman that's been killed. And uh, this is all carry on boys, carry on shuttering, they'll get arrested, job will be done, it's a predetermination, you come, uh, they were watching from the front and the side road, Brampton Close, 
they knew exactly who was there, who arrived, who went, and they had planned to take the house today by whatever means. They, if my friends had stayed longer, they would have waited the whole day, and even if it meant the whole night. But they knew I was on my own inside, and uh, they uh, they got trapped inside themselves. They got trapped, and we got video and audio footage with the cameras, and we got the live footage. And uh, they were not expecting that. They were not expecting that the world is going to see them in catch them red-handed stealing these homes daily. They've been doing that for decades, or at least four decades. So this is England, UK. This is Hainault Essex IG6. 3EB. This is 18, 19th of October 2022. The theft of 450 New North Road IG6 3EB from my late sister Sadna Dolly Chowdhury, the mother of baby Sunaina Chowdhury. So, baby Sunaina was also brutally murdered by Redbridge Council in 2000. She was put into the care of Redbridge Social Services by the Barkingside Magistrates Court on the 20th of October 2000. She died on the 26th of October 2000. My sister was only allowed supervised visits in those six days and my sister smelt semen in baby Sanena's mouth. She found semen on her bib. She found white froth in her mouth, she found a blister on her lip and a bruise under her tongue. She was gang raped by the doctors and these criminal networks, that's what they were doing. They go to mortuaries to rape babies and children. After they've died, they bugger dead bodies. And this is the criminal, the satanic networks, What, how they get their trust in their brotherhoods, the charities, the churches around the world, the orphanages. They get turned into priests and they make lots of babies from raping ba virgins in orphanages in India. There's 9,000 of these criminals dressed as priests from Northern Ireland going to India to make hundreds of babies. So you have a father called Brendan Smythe in Ireland who fathered hundreds of babies. You have a guy called, um, oh, come to me in a minute, uh, Martin McVeigh, who was uh, found with the videos of priests raping babies uh, in uh, around 2012 and he was not arrested and jailed, he was moved, secretly promoted. So Ireland knows this is how it, this structure works. Uh, the women are hostages, the children are hostages, and the men, when the men are recruited into the brotherhoods, their wives and children become commodities of the brotherhood. So the firstborn son is sacrificed routinely, so they'll put the son into crimes or, or mental health services or these criminal networks. And uh, this is how the structure of Satan is operating around the world. So there's a lot of recruitment. These boys are now recruited as, as part of the Brotherhoods. They will get a big house, they'll, a stolen house, and they'll be put in there. So this is how England is now full of criminals living in stolen homes. So either side of 450, those homes were stolen by Redbridge Council. Redbridge Council has constructed these tower blocks across the road, which are still being constructed from land that they stole 
from the pub that, that was there before. And uh, they would have done these incidents. They will go in and kill the people inside. They will ambush them. Then they will cover up for each other. And they will then get a guarantee of a free house for their, for their lifetime as long as they remain criminals, as long as they obey orders from the brotherhoods and the charities and the churches. Um, that uh, they can talk through that there is a warrant when there isn't a warrant they can talk uh, so what this is treason that they're coming as public officers they are pretending to serve and protect the public they are actually recruiting criminals from these younger lads are getting recruited into the criminal networks um, during these raids during these thefts so this structure is growing like a cancer um, so you can see here from the body language that the four officers are now plotting the uh, constable Frau has already briefed the two young lads what to do and then the the lads the young lad actually has a conversation with me uh, so Michael says to him why aren't you wearing your body camera he said I was only you know doing the van I didn't need it so then I said you're not on official duty you're on private duty in a private capacity I said um, um, and he's I said is this how you get promotion he said I got my promotion a long time ago so you just about hear that. Um, so he's already he's already swapped sides. He's already like uh, Constable Holland. He's already been converted to the criminal networks and assured, given an assurance that he will have a life of richness, luxuries, women, and he'll never need to be honourable because being honourable in England is suicide. There's very few honorable um, people in public office. Most of the honorable people are homeless and penniless. They've all been bankrupted. So I can give you names of uh, honorable people who've been murdered by the state. So we had Patrick Cullinane. We had Julian Anthony Fernandez. We had Rita Taylor. They've disappeared. They were living on their own. They were disappeared again you have an incident like this where they just there is no witnesses and they will back each other up and say look just be quiet about this so this criminal law act 1967 section 4 they're breaching by remaining silent of these crimes every single one of these officers has breached section 4 of the criminal law act 1967 and they must all be jailed um, there is no private prosecutions against the state in England so it cannot be called a democracy you cannot file any there is no process of filing private prosecutions against any public servant in any magistrates court whereas every country which is a democracy must have that process like India has uh, an FIR system and they are the logging system it's all made public and so so this guy with the bully hat he was seen earlier when my friends left at 12 p.m. he was in the side road watching who was coming and going and the guy on the door is the locksmith he's smashed up all the locks gone upstairs and downstairs he smashed up the back door the side door and the front door his job is done so now they've they're going to shutter the upstairs windows they've shuttered the back kitchen door um, this one he is very proud to be a criminal he wants to continue to be a criminal for the rest of his life there is no other future for him because of the way that England has just a massive criminal network 
as we know from the drug dealers that lived at 448 New North Road, IG6, 3EB. And the Redbridge Council, uh, the police, are all aware of the, the drug dealing that's going on from Clay Hall to Beale School, where the police officers go. There are five garages in Clay Hall where these, they're growing cannabis, and the officers collect £10,000 per month in bribes from that house. You're proud of yourselves. Uh, to for that guy to sell the drugs to Beale School women. children. So all the children at Beale School are on cannabis it, in Redbridge. This is how they are destroying the futures of these children it it? before they've even had a chance. Don't you find anything better to do? That's not the criminal. police are well are are taking the bribes for that drug dealing going on. What's funny? And then you have John Hoth's farm was stolen by Sussex what? police. What's funny? And uh, his farm is gr the Sussex police is growing cannabis on that farm. The Sussex police has given the firearms license to Winston Leachman, who is a mortgage fraudster. He spent his entire life from the age of 16 to 40 in prison for mortgage fraud. And then he came out, he set up the Kent Freedom Movement. He's teaching people how to uh, get their home stolen whilst he's pretending to save their homes. Those homes are all stolen. He takes cash hundreds of thousands of pounds what in cash from hundreds of victims of banking frauds no, my house. and he sits them. in the Romford County this Court impersonating an immigration it's lawyer not valid. Why is it not valid? Because the matter is and he's getting Roman criminals Campbell. to come from they abroad come from he's putting these criminals in these stolen homes he's the putting these stolen children with these criminals from abroad in these stolen homes and these You're children are just props to stop people realizing we that the criminals have, I have got fostering agreements with Redbridge no, Council so they can access the these children for child abuse get off my land so the Burglars, Honourable criminals, families criminals in England are targeted because they have honourable children and Officer they want honourable children for the corporate structure You're not fit, fit for their profit-led policies. You're of, You're part of the organized uh, so he's not wearing any body camera. And this is how you're getting promotions these days, isn't it? He's very proud of that. No, Michael no, is no, telling him no. that he cannot Hello? come on official duty without his camera on turned on Camera and wearing there. one, so he's clearly he on unofficial duty. No, there is no, that's a radio. He's clearly no, being no, hired no, by the bank. No, I have no camera. It's not there. So at no, this point, they're yeah. arrest, going to yeah. arrest me yeah. and Michael. Um, so they're saying that we've obstructed on. the yeah, enforcement well, by the court authorized bailiffs not. which they're not a camera, so, she, can so the she she wasn't even able to read out okay, she was didn't camera. even give me a proper caution she was it. she was copying what uh, uh, constable frau was saying call, and she did not give me a proper caution so she's not no. a proper police officer no, but she's right. in charge of frau believe it or not she's running him because she went in first and she spoke to them and told them to carry on shuttering doing private jobs in so public capacity. You should never do that, so you know that. She's, um, about 10 years. Have you? she's very sweet and Constable Frau is not aware that she's, uh, she's not properly qualified. And I told her that as well, that she's an actress and she's got a wardrobe of these uniforms. And it's quite apparent from her not being able to caution me that she's She's not a proper police officer. She's an actress. So now he, this guy has been reading out something to think that he's got some kind of authority to arrest me and Michael, whilst he has got no, he hasn't identified himself. He's not the appointed bailiff of the court. And he thinks he's higher than, his authority is higher than the police because the police should have arrested him, put him in jail for life for treason because he's impersonating a public officer from the court. So it's a treason charge for violating the oath to serve and protect God's children. So now this one has now admitted that he got 
promotion a long don't time talk to me. ago. Do not talk to me. Don't come near for me. For his Get off my land. not wearing a camera, his land. doing Stop unofficial duty him. Just during you official time. Him. So this is how messed up the yeah, Home Office him. is in England, the police services in England. They've got youngsters now who think they have the same protections from their criminal networks than that the, their predecessors who've now left this country put them in the front line don't talk to him get off my property and they think get that it's okay property. they will get protected but they don't realize these people those people have property. disappeared they've gone underground they've gone off the grid get off my land and they know that they will be put in thief. prison for life You're if they assassin. are caught because of be the crimes, with. mass crimes they've committed. So they're bringing a lot of foreigners into this country because now the gold reset happened in 2013, the Swiss Indo, and it's going to be a population uh, that decides the amount of wealth the country has. So you won't have smaller population countries with more wealth, which is mostly debt. So America and UK is run on debts. Most of their wealth is debt. And it's going to change now, so that's why it doesn't matter where people live. But the government is worried because the government doesn't have any legitimacy and the government does not have any purpose left because of these criminal networks. And the government is trying to justify its existence by bringing young families from abroad uh, because it has run out of honorable family members in England because they've all got murdered, uh, whistleblowers' families and whistleblowers have been made homeless and murdered. So here we see the main police officer is, is Constable Holland. She's the hijacker of the police in this, in this case. Uh, this one is already well into the networks. The Asian officer is not interested much. He's been trapped. And the previous Asian bailiff who came on the 26th of September, he was trapped. He, he basically told them he's not coming back. And so you can see the Asians tend not to be corruptible. They won't, once they know something is wrong, they will not cooperate. So, so it's left um, here, the actress, you have the um, her her runner boy is uh, Constable Fra uh, Frau is her runner boy and uh, she's got them all under control she's she's unable to caution me and so she's she's going to search me and she's having trouble cautioning me and then she she just says yeah at the end because she's run out of words and so that's she proved that she's an actress she's not a proper officer I've done a data subject access request asking for the body cameras of all these officers I have 30 days to get it and I've asked for the CAD numbers from the 26th of September 3206 and the CAD numbers from the 19th of October and the 20th of October when I'm trying to get access there was a notice put on the window it says contact lender.services at walkermorris.co.uk and uh, the, the, um, they say that's the estate agent it's as if the estate agents have taken the house but it's actually Walker Morris that have taken the house and uh, Liz Trust resigned the following day on the 20th of October. It's very strange that I wrote to the Queen on the 4th of July 2022 um, about Swiss Indo, about our gold reset per population, per head, per capita, the wealth of a country per capita. It used to be the wealth of a country was per birth, the birth weight in gold. So I've given my camera to Sham now because I'm going to get arrested and I've asked him to film me being arrested 
So, uh, Constable F Holland is going to put her gloves on and she's going to search my body for weapons. So they've got an old woman thrown out of her home who is who is seriously ill. They've got her outside and they think that this woman who's just been made homeless is has got weapons on her. They're searching Michael as well for weapons. Um, Michael, who is elderly like myself. So um, they're going to treat me like the criminal, the criminals, the house thieves, the incompetent police, the treasonous police are carrying on victimizing me. Not only did they steal my house, but they arrested me and took me to Fresh Wolf, where the, the trip caused my blood pressure to shoot up to critical levels of 220 over 115. This was another attempt to kill me. And they don't, they don't stop this act of terrorism. This is state terrorism. So if you're looking from the outside, you don't see what's going on. So you have seven or eight bailiffs have sided, the police have sided with them, four police officers. So you have 12 people there. I have just myself, an elderly woman. I have just my elderly friends who have come to support me to stop this and what chance is there there is zero chance of this stopping because the police are criminal networks members are recruited the bailiffs are fakesters who steal homes and give to the criminal network so why are they going to ever uh, do the honorable thing because the structure doesn't allow it they would be killed if anyone who's part of the brotherhoods of uh, 33 degree masons if they speak out about anything they would be murdered so a lot of the them go silent for fear of their lives and this is the sadness of of the corporate structure is that it's run by criminal networks you see them here in action you see there is nothing anyone can do the elderly are murdered daily and the I'm a whistleblower of my baby niece's murder and rape in the, in the care of Redbridge Social Services. I was struck off as a pharmacist because I gave 60 names of doctors, nurses and pharmacists at King George Hospital uh, and Tesco Pharmacy that who murdered, who overdosed my baby niece. And I was struck off for that. I was on, at the time, I was on a salary, uh, I was going around the hospitals. My daily rate was £240 a day back in 2008. Um, so this is what happens to honourable professionals in the UK. So Michael is being escorted into the back of the police van by Constable Frau and uh, so the people around Hainault have seen what's happened they think I'm a criminal I cannot live in that house because my neighbors will want to know what's happened and I'm not going to explain that the police in the UK are house thieves, murderers, assassins treasonous criminals because the pe people will find out themselves when it's too late for them that is a fact of routine murders of rich people honorable people anyone who's hard-working will get murdered in England Oh, but and uh, there's a construction work going on. This is the Asian young lad putting Michael in the back of the van, where I'm putting the back of the van as well with him. And it has a six inch by two foot bench. And you can see the van doors uh, are curving in at the top so my head was not supported at all and it was bashing against the metal door 
the whole journey and by the time it's, I have a C4, C7 aneurysm and it's called sympathetic dysreflexia which means my blood pressure my neck has to be in the right place for my blood pressure to behave and because my neck was twisted in the van my blood pressure went a critical and so not only did they the police uh, treat me as a criminal they also tried to kill me in the van uh, they had to do an assessment of me they I asked for my medication and constable Holland she said she wouldn't she went upstairs she looked for my medication found my medication she said she didn't bring it because it didn't have my name on it and this is my iodine tincture because I had a tooth removed a molar removed I was I've got a big hole in my mouth that's infected and she refused to get me my iodine pot with cotton wool so I could have had that and my paracetamols so they did not permit me to go back in the house they, I was no threat to them if I went accompanied by the police officer back in the house. What were they afraid of? What is it that they're hiding? Why did they turn off the CCTV cameras if they're acting within the law? It's because they don't have a warrant. They do not have an appointed bailiff on site, they are acting criminally and that is proved and these all these police officers and these bailiffs need to be arrested. The bankers at Lloyd's Banking Group, Charlie Nunn and all the directors need to be arrested and the Walker Morris LLP directors need to be arrested for their activities. Daily basis, 5,000 victims. Thanks for watching. Neelu Berry out. I'm in a hotel, Redbridge Council. My my nephew is Rishi Sunak. He's become the Prime Minister the following day after this. And today is Diwali, 24th of October. It's 22 years since they murdered my baby niece today. Yesterday, sorry. Today is the 25th. Okay, bye for now. How do you do it? I don't know how to do it. Okay, I don't know how to pick that.